Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. Here are the top 10 terrifying human crossbreed experiments. Yeah, we're diving into some more weird animals. Let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, glowfish. I never had a fish tank growing up, but if I did, I probably wouldn't want any hybrid glowy fish bouncing around in there. That's for sure. I don't know. That's what lava lamps are for, no? That's a completely different vibe. You'd be doing this while you're trying to sleep. Trying to dodge out glowfish. Back in 2012, while the world was otherwise, you know, preoccupied with not dying or whatever was supposed to happen in 2012, Yorktown Technologies created a hybrid glowfish. They were first created out of zebrafish, but now there's a whole plethora of glowfish that you can purchase, not just the zebra kind. We got tiger barbs, we got rainbow shark, and betta. I don't know what betta is, but we got them, and they're glowy. We figured out how to make them glowy, I guess to hype up Avatar 2. I think that was supposed to come out back then. I don't see why we needed hybrid glowfish, but here we are. Bioluminescence is natural. We see octopus or deep sea fish that have it naturally, that's cool. But when it's not natural, you can tell. You know what I mean? It looks plasticky. It looks not right. Scientists in Singapore were originally aiming to modify fish to spot toxins in polluted water easier. But then on one hand, you're like, ah, oh, they're pretty mesmerizing. They're glowy, we like them, they're cute. Alan Blake, co-founder of said Yorktown technologies wanted them to glow only when near toxins. Yeah, this was back in 2003 when they first started. The guy wanted real life toxin notifications in the water. That's crazy. Oh, toxins. There we go. Good idea, but like there's other ways, I think. Also, don't fish love shiny things? These guys would be lunch in like a matter of minutes. Today we're at a point where glowfish are being sold to houses for for reasons. Do you want a glowfish? I, I wouldn't be able to sleep. I don't want any part of that. It doesn't affect them in any way. It doesn't hurt, apparently. Their skin just changes. I don't know. That kind of feels like a big deal to me. I'd be, I'd be like, what's going on? Help. Number nine, see-through frog. Yeah, just when you thought frogs were already hard to spot and catch, boom. Now they're invisible, pal. Good luck. Back in 2016, through artificial insemination, scientists successfully took the DNA of two kinds of recessive color mutant frogs. They took black-eyed and gray-eyed frogs, and then they did science. That's what they did, they just smacked them together and they're like, whoa, that was so easy. They combined them together to create a frog whose skin is always translucent. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason for this. It's cool, but there's also a reason. The see-through factor allows observation of organ growth or cancer formation without having to cut into them, you know what I mean? Kinda helps when you can see the problem, right? No dissection needed for further study. That was the goal here, not bad. But imagine being see-through at all times. I'd be like, hey pal, my eyes are up here, okay? Quit staring at my pancreas. Gotta move on. Number eight, savannah cats. This one has been talked about for a while now. It's pretty common, weirdly enough. How do we feel about savannah cats? Let's talk about these little critters. In May 2012, the International Cat Association, I wanna work there, first of all, they registered this savannah cat as a new official breed. It's official, the international cat community confirmed it. And it all started in the late 80s when Judy Frank crossbred a male several with a domestic Siamese. The offspring was appropriately named Savannah, yeah. Imagine if I was like, no, it's actually Amanda. I lied to you. They just called them Savannah cats for no reason. In turn, now we have cats with big ears. We did it, folks. We did it. Domestic cats mixed with wild African cats. I mean, it sounds like you're gonna get another cat. And we did. Great work. I don't know how to tell you this. I mean, apparently they're great. They're not too crazy temper-wise, but they're fun and energetic at the same time. Apparently they're great for families. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying great for families in a list that gets as dark as it's gonna get. Number seven, the Zorse. The Zorse. Yes, the male zebra, female horse. Now we get a really fun word. Zorse, the Zorse, sorry. It sounds like a god. Yeah, there's Thor, Odin, and then Zorse. Zebroids, that's their scientific name, they're usually quite common, historically. Charles Darwin even noted some in his work. So since the 19th century, crossbreeding zebras with horses, donkeys, you name it, has been done. More often than not, and this is what makes them stand out, zebroids will experience dwarfism. So they're very little petite little guys. In 2010, a Zedonk was born. It was a zebra donkey, but again, back in the 70s, this happened before, and no one really talked about it. There were three born in Colchester Zoo. Yeah, those zookeepers were like, hmm, how do we make zoos new and hip? Bizarre, humans are so weird. They're not too smart, humans. They're like, yeah, let's put these in a cage. It'll be fine. Number six, bees. I hate bees so much. When the window's closed, we're good. Remember when we had to worry about killer bees for a couple months, like a year ago? during an already dark time. Should we still be worried? Are these killer bees coming back? Are they a real thing? Hybrid bees, those are also, huh? Will hybrid bees fight the killer bees? Can we watch this? Can we tune in and watch this on Triller? An experiment in the 70s tried to change the hashtag bee game. And in turn, we got a brand new bee. Yeah, we love those, just new bees to dodge outside. The idea at first was to take a regular honeybee and then breed it with an African honeybee. Ideally, we would get a hybrid bee that can safely 
<laughs> safely provide more honey than a regular honeybee. Okay, that's steps. We're going towards the future of this one, right? On paper. The experiment obviously didn't work with these new bees and they didn't do that at all. And worst part of all, the bees got out. Yeah, imagine that email to whom it may concern. Oh God, I left the door open, I'm sorry. These bees are aggressive towards other kinds of bees. They're not too nice, they're not too friendly. And they're very aggressive towards humans as well, in case you were wondering. And when these bees sting, their stinger stays with them afterwards so they can continue stinging multiple times with their stinger butts. Yeah, they don't fall off, right? That's our only hope when we see a bee the size of a tennis ball. We're like, uh, he won't, will he? Will he? I don't think. These bees would, because they can. Yeah, hybrid killer bees. Victims have received 10 times the amount of stings as regular swarms. It's a lot, it's a lot of stings, it's a lot of movements from the bee's hips there. That's like some Caesar, that's like the Julius Caesar numbers right there, that's crazy. They react to disturbances 10 times faster and they will also chase said disturbance a quarter of a mile to find it. So yeah, don't sneeze. Hm. These bees have caused over 1,000 deaths. So yeah, I, I guess we should worry. We should definitely worry. Hit that thumbs up just because we're like, uh, no, there's, there's no, there's no good in this. That's scary, that's so scary. Hit that thumbs up for bee progression. Let's save the bees, Hit the thumbs up for the bees. Let's save all the bees except for those kinds. The other ones are good. Number five, Tigons. Tigons be bygones, ha <laughs> ha. He's good. I was gonna say Liger, but that's been used before. We know what that one looks like. Tigons were a real hybrid animal you could see for yourself at both the London Zoo and the Manchester Zoo once upon a time. This was of course back in the late 30s where folks didn't you know, bat an eye towards these kind of things with animals. Yeah, yeah, step on up and see the Tigon. A tiger head, a lion body, and a tiger tail. That's what happens when you put animals in the same cage. Come on out. Well, sometimes they'll get along too well in said cage and then you'll get a Tigon. Tigon hybrids were seen long before the 90s. Actually, 1837, Queen Victoria was gifted a Tigon. Imagine that. I wouldn't know what to do with that. I'd be like, hi, what are you? Number four, Hiramitsu Nakachi. Stem cell biologist from Tokyo. This one is insane. Now we're getting to the dark ones here. Just recently, his experiments have been approved by the government, so things are actively in play here, not just, you know, Farmer Joe in the early 1900s. No, this is modern science. This is some black mirror type stuff here. Hiramitsu hopes to grow human cells inside of mice and rats, and then transplant set embryos into surrogate animals. A lot of animals, a lot of cells, a lot of traffic, a lot of moving around, and a lot of science, apparently. Cells into rats and mice embryos. How did we even get here? Who thought of this first? We went from the Salem witch trials to rodents being genetically manipulated so they can make pancreases for themselves. I like the word pancreas. I've been using it a few times lately. But his hope was that the rodent bodies would use the human cells to then make a pancreas for themselves. Here's the thing though, while conducting said experiments, they found that the rats were starting to develop a human type brain. That's when they pulled the plug on that entire project. Yeah, the second humans and animals get too close, governments will come in and go, stop. Number three, beefalo. Beefalo sounds like a Pokemon. It sounds like a thing that's close to being real, but shouldn't be. And that's where it should have stayed, if I'm being honest. The beefalo should have only been a concept. But then a guy named Charles Buffalo Jones did the impossible. Look at him go. One day in 1906, he said, hey, watch this, and then started breeding Arizona bison with domestic cattle in order to produce a hardy commercial animal, you know, just something new to make some money. He ended up giving up on this project entirely and then he just released the animals. Yeah, guy just got bored and released science projects to the wilds. What could go wrong? The beefalo then found their way into a national park where hunting was banned, so they thrived. And they thrived without natural predators at that. The population began to grow by 50% every single year. And at first you're like, wow, we did it. This is like Jurassic Park, but cute. No, their environmental impact was horrible. It was not ideal. They played God. They messed with the circle of life. You eat one bug, then there's a hurricane somewhere else. First off, these guys are very thirsty animals. They can consume 10 gallons of water each trip to a watering hole. They're like that one kid growing up drinking at the water fountain. You're like, guy. Save some, please hurry, I'm so thirsty. Yeah, they drank all the water. Every animal was so thirsty after. They also uh, in said water, so they ruined the entire water park for every other animal involved. Yeah, all bad. Entire ecosystems were messed up at this point. Everybody got thirsty because Charles Buffalo Jones was like, hey, watch this, let's try something new. Number two, don't try this at home. Not sure how many times I have to say this, but don't try any crossbreeding at home. 
or ever for that matter. Because things go south, obviously. For example, back in 2010, a woman named Julie Leroy was working as an animal control officer when an owner of a pit bull puppy said that she didn't want to keep her. This is normal, maybe a kid will come into the, the picture, maybe the dog's too aggressive, whatever, and then they have to give it back, okay. When Julie saw the dog, she was in shock. She was like, yeah, I'll take this living animal, first of all, I'm not a monster, thank you, I can do this. People who abandon animals, also, they're the devil, side note. This dog was different, but it wasn't mean. It was just a hybrid. It wasn't healthy, but all the more reason why you should stick around, know what I mean? The dog had a squished body, it had a huge jaw, and a bad underbite, and it was oddly shaped. That's because the dog suffered from short spine syndrome. That's because they got the dog from this backyard breeder who was carelessly breeding a bunch of dogs together, just for fun, not really knowing what he's doing. Thankfully, Julie did know what she was doing. She brought the dog home and gave her a loving home. Sweet little thing. Olivia and I want a dog so badly, so you know what? We'll take this hybrid little lady anytime. Her name's Kuda. She's in great hands, but look at her. She's so cute. And finally, number one. Lions. Back in the 80s, the Chat Bar Zoo in Chandigarh, India, they tried this fun little science experiment for themselves. Yeah. They tried an experimental program, rather, where they would breed together domestic lions, little petite, you know, well, small in terms of a lion. They would mix them with these massive, beastly African lions in the hopes that they would meet in the middle somewhere and be introduced to the wild and help with the dying population of wild lions in India. Again, on paper, we wanted to get involved, we want to help restructure the lives of this animal, but the zoo found two African lions that were being used in a circus and then brought them in to breed with their two Asiatic lions. And it didn't, obviously it's number one, it didn't work. When the cubs were born, it was clear that this was already a mistake. The cubs had weak back legs, they were having extreme trouble walking, and as they got older, their immune systems just started to fail faster and faster. By 2000, they'd bred more than 70 of these hybrid lions. That's a lot of, it's a lot of projects, a lot of experiments. So they finally decided to stop the program, thankfully, and all the males were given vasectomies in order to stop any further reproduction, which is so odd to me. Like, I'm not a fan of humans at all at this point. They're like, like, hey, welcome to Earth. Yeah, it kind of sucks, right? It's hot. Okay, cool. We're going to stop making you now. Cheers. What? Naturally, thankfully, there are laws that prohibit officials from just killing these animals, so now they're just simply waiting for them to die naturally, which is, it's better. It's certainly better, but still, stop messing with nature, guys. What do I have to, how many times do I have to tell you? Stop messing with nature. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Those were some crossbreeding experiments you shouldn't do or try. It's all dark. Humans are so dark. And we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Peace. First created from zebra fresh, zebra fresh? First created from zebra fresh, whoa, f oh no. First created from zebra fish, but now there's a whole, they're gonna be like, why'd you say it like that? I made it, but now there's a whole plethora of fish that you can, I can't say fish, what the f Beta? No, it's two T's, it's beta. If it's beta, you spelt it wrong. Uh, but, 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 I, I literally went to the organ list, I'm like, what's the funniest? I think pancreas is funny. How's a weird kind of like, pancreas? Sounds like pancakes. Wow, I had so much coffee today. Can't do that. That's like a stab, but you can't see it. Maybe even do it a thumbs up. Hey. Uh, so, sorry. I went off the trail.